Hello, 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 and welcome to Success Story Saturday, 9-9, September 9, 2017, as the sun sets here in beautiful, sunny Arizona, and I am recording this in somewhat lack of light, so let's get it done and move on. So, uh, Rhino of the Day is this very cool, artistic, painted rock rhino, a somewhat confused rhino because he's painted like a cheetah and a zebra and, I don't know, a turtle or something. So, like, uh, but I, I assure you, he's, in fact, a rhino, and that's the rhino of the day. Now, today's Success Story Saturday, we're talking about Richard Branson, who is in the news. Richard Branson, who is a lifelong, one of the most successful and flamboyant and... Uh, most pronounced renegade entrepreneurs alive today. He started his first business when he was 16, publishing a magazine that he called Student. When he was 20, he started a mail order record company, selling records through mail order. And a couple years later, he enlarged that to a chain of record, brick and mortar record stores, and then a record label. And then he bought a uh, built uh, in his built, built bought like a mansion and put a recording studio in it. And he Signed all kinds of big stars to his record label. You look, look all this up about Virgin. Now later on, he bought a an airline, which he called Virgin Atlantic, and then he got in some kind of financial trouble, and he had to sell his record company to get some cash. And uh, I think it sold for like a billion dollars or a billion pounds in England or whatever it was. And he was all disappointed that his very first business. Now, by the way, uh, the uh, as the story goes, he named it Virgin because everybody involved with that business, it was pretty much their first business, or at least they were new to the record industry. Uh, but but since then, everything he does, pretty much, he calls it Virgin this, Virgin that, Virgin this. He's now into space, uh, you know, uh, exploration and, and all kinds of uh, uh, futuristic type of stuff with energy and space and travel. And he's got some world records for attempting all kinds of daring feats of crossing the the one or the, uh, the, the, whatever it's called, the English Channel and doing this and that. You can look him up. All kinds of exciting stuff. He's a huge humanitarian, gives away lots of money. Um, but he's in the news right now because he paid, he bought a $6 million Caribbean island, virtually uninhabited about 30 years ago or so. Um, he, he at first gave a lowball offer to the guy for like a hundred grand for the island. The guy laughed at him. And then later on, the owner of the island needed money so badly that he took an offer from Richard Branson for 180 grand. So he got this multi-million dollar island for 180 grand. And a few years later, and he reportedly put ten million dollars into it and built up the whole island. And he charged sixty-five thousand dollars a night to stay there for up to thirty-five people or something. And had all these different houses there and the main house, which had all and he lived in a private residence. As the story goes, and I guess we'll hear more of this over the days, but this Hurricane Irma, this big record-setting, big Atlantic hurricane just hit through the Caribbean, and it pretty much leveled his entire island. And he stayed there obliviously to all the warnings of, like, get the heck out of there, guy. And supposedly a couple of days before the storm hit, sorry to laugh, but he was tweeting or blogging about how, you know, this home is really substantially built and it, it should ought to be, it's withstood other storms and ought to really be able to withstand this hurricane. So we're going to stay here with our guests. And uh, then, you know, just recently he emerged and tweeted from something like using a satellite phone because all the communications are down. This whole island, trees are gone, homes are gone. I guess over the coming days or weeks or whatever, we'll, we'll see video or he'll assess the damage. But, you know, at one point, the, 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 the main home on that island burned down about five years ago. And everyone got out alive, including I think his mother was staying there. But the whole thing burned down. He rebuilt it. So I have a feeling he'll rebuild this again. I mean, the guy's reportedly worth about $5 billion. So I'm pretty sure he'll rebuild this time. But, you know, he, he was like, oh, he hunkered down in the wine cellar and came out and we survived yay and then he, he puts out like a tweet like hey anybody else in the path of these hurricanes like get the heck out of there when they tell you so like gee don't do as i did do as i say uh richard branson and then of course i think he even tweeted some nonsense about, i mean he has really bought into this hook line and sinker this whole al gore fable about how man is causing the change of the climate new odds the biggest thing going and we got to 
put all our tax dollars into it and all this, instead of putting tax dollars into things that like are real, like feeding homeless people or rebuilding infrastructure or paying down the debt, God forbid, that the country has or anything. No, we've got to like channel billions of dollars of taxpayer money into some, because the polar ice caps are going to melt by 2019. That's what Al Gore said in his big hit movie. Like, oops, wait, it's 2017, they're still there. But anyway, I digress. So uh, our thoughts and prayers go out to Rick Branson, who is physically fine and, again, has billions of dollars and owns multiple companies and does all kinds of stuff. So he'll recover from this, setting an example. Again, a true entrepreneur that no matter what happens and no matter how devastated things get and how much you lose, you rebuild it all again, you build it back up again. We survive, we thrive, we come through anything, and, uh, and we can do it. And if anyone can, it's Richard Branson. So tremendous success story. I didn't get into anywhere near the detail on his entrepreneurial success, which is mind-boggling. Look him up, study him. Uh, he's still going strong, and he's still very physically active. He, he owns like world records in kite surfing. You know, so President Obama, when he left office, first thing he did was go down to Richard Branson's now devastated private island and do some kite surfing with him. So, I mean, this guy is uh, is one of the most well known, most celebrated, most successful entrepreneurs. Unfortunately, today he is uh, he's dealing with the aftermath of a devastating earthquake that pretty much leveled his entire private island. Uh, but you'll see, I predict, he will survive and he will thrive anyway. So that's it for Success Story Saturday, September 9th, 2017. Hey, Don is here. John Bachman, Will is here. Thanks for being here. Anybody that uh, I have several clients that are in Florida with all the, the news of this hurricane make landfall, I guess, in a few hours and already the rains and wind and whatever. But big difference between Florida, of course. And uh, Houston, hey, thanks for the likes. Uh, between Houston uh, area and uh, Florida, is Florida is pretty much built to withstand hurricanes. So they got all kinds of, you know, hurricane windows and concrete roofs and concrete walls and all kinds of stuff. Of course, Richard Branson said the same thing. Hey, we got storm shutters and it's concrete and everything's fine and like boom, level. So hopefully that doesn't happen to Florida and everyone is safe and sound because the uh, I wasn't even get, oh, able to get hold of one of the clients I have there, but the clients I get a hold of that I have in Florida are staying there and saying, yeah, you know, let's, we're staying here. Like, come on. And so, uh, whatever. Hopefully everyone is okay. And Will says, uh, Branson has not bought into the climate change story. He has figured out how to make money if everyone else buys into it. You know, that's a great point. I believe you are correct that Richard Branson is promulgating, he's putting out there the, the bogus climate change story. But in reality, that's a great point. You know, in 2006, he put forth a big thing that said, I'm going to donate $3 billion over the next 10 years to combat global climate change. And in 2014, two years before the 10 years was up, a story surfaced somewhere. A reporter found that he had given less than a tenth of it, less than $300 million. Now, $300 million is still a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. But when you pledge $10, 10, $3 billion, and you give less than a tenth of it, like, hmm, is that because he really believes in it? And second of all, she cited in that article, furthermore, his Virgin Atlantic uh, uh, planes, his, his, uh, his uh, uh, airline, uh, had increased its emissions of greenhouse gases or whatever, you know, whatever these guys think is such a big problem that uh, is going to ruin the whole world or some nonsense. Like So it's, again, just like Al Gore and Leonardo DiCaprio and all the rest of these fabricating do as I say, not as I do people again. Uh, Richard Branson, once again, is one of those. So, Will, thanks for the correction. This guy does, I believe, he does not believe in this false climate change is the biggest problem. Oh, it's a big deal. It's going to hurt everyone's story because he personally doesn't live by it. He didn't give the money he pledged. His airline continues to increase its greenhouse gas emissions uh, even after he claimed, oh, this is such a big deal. And also, you know, look, all those climate change hypocritical fanatics up with their private jets and their unbelievable huge electric bills and using all kinds more energy than, than any entire neighborhood could possibly use in a decade. They use like in a weekend. And, yeah, I, I agree with you, Will, there. Thanks for pointing that out. Branson is one of those climate change hypocrites, of which there are many, unfortunately. But I, I don't think it'll last much longer. Like, uh, how much longer can they 
you know, put up with this charade until people are going to catch on and realize that they're full of crap. But anyway, I digress. Branson, even though he is ridiculously hypocritical about this false climate change narrative nonsense, and he, you know, was, I think, guilty of tax evasion at one point and whatever, so there's, there's some negatives about him, and that stopped him from getting to be appointed to some government position or getting ownership of something or whatever, but still, phenomenally successful as an entrepreneur and a real free-willing renegade, like he's known to go around with a scissor and cut the ties off of anyone he sees with a tie. And then he says, like, he had somebody, like, embroider him into a, a blanket or pillows or something like that to remind him, like, oh, ties, they don't just restrict your, your intake of air, they restrict your creativity, and they, they're all, you know, they encourage conformity. And, you know, he's a, he's a real renegade kind of guy. So um, interesting to study. And, of course, a renegade for staying on an island that was right in the path of the most dangerous hurricane that man can remember to come through the Atlantic. And sure enough, as usual, the, the weather is something that man cannot change and cannot deal with. And, you know, I think that was a pretty clear message. Yeah, no matter how many 300 million out of the 3 billion that you pledge that you donate or how much you, you claim that it's such a thing or you're going to change things or you're going to whatever, like, no, sorry. Hurricanes have always happened. They're going to continue happening. And, and you know, he's going to, I think, going to continue rebuilding his entire island right in the face and right in the place of massive hurricane activity. And he knows it's going to get leveled again. He'll rebuild it again. I mean, it's everyone in Houston, Florida, whatever that makes that choice, makes that choice. Anyway, thank you for that, Will. Anybody else that was here, thanks for the likes. Thanks for anyone watching on the replay. I'll be back tomorrow with Sunday Fun Day. I'll check in. Uh, but that's it for Success Story Saturday, September 9th, 2017. Thanks for joining me here. Again, if you're anywhere near this hurricane, Florida, Georgia, Carolina's up the coast. I know all kinds of people that have cleared out and getting their families out of there, wherever. Be safe, and hopefully your possessions are safe as well. And I'll be back here again tomorrow.